We're given two particles and their positions as a function of time. That should alert us that if they ask us a question about velocity, that we're going to have to deal with the first derivative with respect to time of these functions. And similarly, if, that if they ask us a question about acceleration, then we'll need to take the second derivative of this function, or whichever the function in question is. As we survey the questions that they're going to be asking us, we need to know when something is headed to the right, something is headed to the left. Again, let's recall that that is, first of all, a discussion about velocity. And second, that means they're asking a question about a region when something is positive or when something is negative. I'm going to bring up some useful information for that, as well as the subsequent questions. Namely, they also ask us about speed. We have to recall that that has to do with the velocity and acceleration uh, working against each other or in concert. And then finally, they ask us for an average. We have to determine that it's the average value of a function over an interval. And that recalls this formula that I've placed up on the screen. Hopefully those three hints are going to be enough to take us through these problems. So let's start with part A. The question is, when is the particle R moving to the right? So we immediately have to okay, say that uh, rightward motion Rightward motion means a velocity greater than zero. So we'll take the derivative, dr dt, and we get 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. That looks like we can pull out a 3, so why don't we do that. And when we see this, we see that that's easily factorable. So what we have is t minus 3, t minus 1. The reason we went ahead and factored it is, remember, when they ask when something is in a region of being positive or negative, we want to find the zeros first. And finding zeros is easy when you factor. So we have zeros at, at t equals 1 and 3. Now this function in general is an upward pointing parabola. I can take advantage of that knowledge and the fact that the zeros are at 1 and at 3 to now say that the particle is moving to the right when the velocity is positive. So r is moving rightward. equals 0 to 1 and from t equals 3 to 6. I'll leave it as an exercise to the reader why it is that I knew that this was an inequality um, with an equal, this was a strict inequality, this was a strict inequality, and this is an inequality that includes an equal sign. Okay, B wants to know about moving in opposite directions. Well, we can't really get started on that until we do for particle P what we've just done for particle R, namely find the intervals where it's moving leftward and the intervals where it's moving rightward. So we'll repeat much of the same process. We'll have to take dp dt to get the velocity 
and we're going to need to use the chain rule that looks like two times negative sine of pi over 4 t and then we have to multiply that by pi over 4. So a simplified form of dp dt 2 over the 4 gives us a half. We've got negative pi over 2 sine pi over 4t. <clears throat> okay, now we have to deal with this rightward leftward issue. So again, it's easier to find the zeros first. When is this expression equal to zero? It's equal to zero when sine is equal to zero. What inputs make sine equal to zero? Well, sine equals zero when its input is a zero, a pi, two pi, so multiples of pi. So we can write that when pi over four t equals zero, pi, two pi, etc. Uh, motion is to the right. Mo or motion is uh, zero. And that occurs when t equals, I'm just multiplying both sides by 4 over pi, t equals 0, 4, 8, etc. The only ones that are of interest to us are the 0 and the 4 because 8 is outside of our 0 to 6 bounds. And so we have zeros at 0 and 4. Now, between 0 and 4, is it rightward or leftward? Whatever the answer is, we'll know that between 4 and 8, it's the opposite. But how are we going to determine that? Well, you pick a convenient point, for example, between 0 and 4, such as t equals 2. And that gives us sine of 2 pi over 4, or sine of pi over 2. That's a positive number. So the overall expression includes a negative sign. That tells us that the velocity is negative between 0 and 4. Therefore, it's moving to the left. We know that from 4 to 8, therefore, it's moving to the right. And so we have to make a comparison table to find out when these particles are moving in opposite direction and when they're moving in concert. Let's do it like this. R and P. Here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now, what did we learn about R? We learned that R was positive from 0 to 1. It was also positive from 3 to 6. And therefore, it was negative from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. With P, on the other hand, we have negative values 0 up to 4, and then we have positive values 4 to 6. All we have to do now is identify those regions where the velocities are opposite. So from 0 to 1, R and P are moving in opposite directions, and from 3 to 4, they're doing the same thing. So let's conclude that R and P are moving in opposite directions from for T between 0 and 1. and for t between 3 and 4. Part C asks first about the acceleration and then speeding up or slowing down. So acceleration at t equals 3 is the same as taking the second derivative of p with respect to t and evaluating it at t equals 3. We have the first derivative, 
So we can just take the derivative of that. We get negative pi over 2 cosine pi over 4t times another factor of pi over 4 by the chain rule. And all of that has to be evaluated at t equals 3. Let's um, consolidate the terms. We have a of 3 equals, let's see, negative pi squared over 8 times the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Hopefully you're not stressing about evaluating the cosine of 3 pi over 4 because this is not a calculator section. So let's just draw a little diagram to remind us how sine and cosine work and what 3 pi over 4 means. So 3 pi over 4 is 3 quarters of the way towards being back to the x-axis. That's what 3 pi over 4 is. And we recall from our trigonometry that gives us this sort of a triangle where the height is the sine and the sine width is the cosine. It's a 45 degree angle there between this line and the x-axis. And so we know that this is the same as negative root 2 over 2. Put all of that together and we get that a of 3 equals positive uh, pi squared over times root 2 over 16. Pi squared root 2 over 16. And so we see that a of 3 is positive. Now, we've got a positive acceleration. And what about velocity at p equals 3, or at t equals 3? We've got a negative velocity. And negative velocity. Therefore, from our chart, and let's just take a moment to remind ourselves what this chart means. It says that when velocity and acceleration are both positive, they're working in concert, therefore the speed is increasing. Similarly, if they're both negative, they're also working in concert, and the speed is increasing. However, when speed and acceleration are opposite of each other, then the speed, or I'm sorry, when velocity and acceleration are opposite each other, then the speed is decreasing. Therefore, from the table above, speed is decreasing. At t equals 3. We sure don't have a lot of space left for part D, but fortune favors us because it doesn't ask us to do any work, it just, or rather any evaluation, it just asks us to set up the expression. Well, what we have to see here, what is absolutely crucial, is we have to be able to translate from the wording that they give us, average distance between particles on an interval, we have to realize that that's just asking for the average value of a function over a certain interval. And we have that handy formula. So we know that the answer is 1 over 3 minus 1, the indefinite integral from t equals 1 to t of equals 3. We're going to be integrating with respect to t. And now the question is, what function is it that they want the average value of? They ask for the distance between the two particles. Distance, that tells us that it's the absolute value. 
and the between the two particles that's just the difference of the particle positions so it's just p of t minus r of t again part d is really just a decoding exercise do you understand what distance is do you understand what the average value of a function over an interval is.